I'm uh, Master Chief Jeff Ryan um, from the United States Coast Guard, and uh, what we're talking about here is Coast Guard history during the War of 1812. Uh, at that time, it was known as the U.S. Revenue Cutter Service, established in 1790, and when the war breaks out in 1812, um, the Navy has about 17 ships in the fleet. The Coast Guard had about 14 cutters. So the 31 ships combined together were the national fleet to fight against the British. Um, the items you see here are navigation gear that would have been found on board revenue cutter at that time. This is an octant. The octant is one eighth of a circle. Uh, was popular all the way up until about 1806 when the sextant was then uh, put into use, which is one sixth of a circle. Um, the octant was used for taking celestial observations. Basically, we're shooting stars, planets, the sun, or the moon. The, uh, the object reflected off one mirror onto the other. You could see the horizon, the, uh, the glass. Um, you would swing an arc, getting the position and making sure that it touched on the horizon. And then down below here, you would take a look through the magnifying glass and get the angle. So it would tell you the degrees, minutes, and seconds. You worked up a navigational problem that was basically a big long trigonometry problem. And that position would then be plotted on the chart, where the two lines crisscross was your position on the chart. And you then worked your, your, uh, your course line off of that. This here is the sand glass. It was a half hour long. Every half hour, bells were struck. And uh, various things had to happen in the watch at the half hour. So at the very top of the, uh, the watch, say at 12 o'clock, you rang eight bells. At uh, 12.30, it was one bell, one o'clock was two, at 1.33, and so on until you got through eight bells. At the end of eight bells, the watch switched out from the port watch to the starboard watch, and every four hours, they would go back and forth. Um, things that had to happen on that half hour, this is a traverse board. It matches with the compass face, and what that did was that allowed them to gauge where the wind was through the eight half hours of the watch. They would have little metal pegs on these, and at each half hour, they would mark what the wind speed was from lightest to heaviest, and they would put a peg in there. At the end of this, the officer of the day would then turn it over to the new officer coming on watch, and he would see what the history was of the wind direction and what the ship's speed was during that four-hour period. When he got done, he would log it into the logbook, which was logged with ink and a quill pen. They would write it in here and any other significant event that happened in the watch, say they spotted another ship or they engaged another ship, that would be logged in there at what time and what happened. This is the long glass. Long glass was required. Every officer had to own one of their own. You were required to have it on the watch with you each time you were on watch. And this allowed you to be able to look at other ships and find out what flag they were flying very common for warships back in the day to fly someone else's colors to lure you up close to them. And then the requirement was that they had to haul down the false colors and put up their own before they fired their first gun. The last thing that we have here, this is the lead. Sea lead was used for finding the depth of water and to tell what type of bottom you had. And the bottom here was an indentation. They put uh, tallow in it, which is just basically very cheap wax. What it did was when it hit the bottom, it would then pull up whatever was on there. You could see if it was sand or shale or mud. And this was important for if you were going to be anchoring, you wanted to make sure that you had good holding ground. Every six feet on this, there would have been a mark. First one would have been one piece of uh, leather. So two shreds there of leather would uh, be identifiable in the dark. The next one was a white rag, then a red rag, then three pieces of leather. And this way, when you were standing in the chains in the dark, you could identify it by feeling it. The first five were known as by the mark. The sixth one is known as by the deep. And this is why sailors refer to, when they throw something over the side, deep sixing something, because the sixth mark is by the deep. The first five, by the mark. The second one, commonly throughout the United States, would have been by the mark two, except in the Mississippi River Valley, where it would have been mark twain. This is how Samuel Clemens, being an old pilot and a riverboat captain, came up with the idea of making his pen name Mark Twain. It's really a depth sounding. 